This video is to provide you with an introduction into stoichiometric calculations, arguably the most difficult subject matter of the course. The idea is actually a, quite a straightforward one. It's to take a balanced chemical equation, that is an equation which has the proper stoichiometry, and make calculations such as this. Let's say we have 128 grams of oxygen and we want to know how many grams of hydrogen we need to react with that. That type of calculation is called a stoichiometric calculation. And to do that, we need to be able to do at least two things. One, we have to be able to count by weighing. That is, in the real world, we're only able to weigh things. However, Mother Nature, when she does a chemical reaction, she actually counts the number of items. The next thing is we have to scale things up a bit. Hydrogen molecules and oxygen molecules, they really don't weigh very much. And so we have to be able to scale them way up so that we can actually see those quantities on the gram level. Now, those two factors are indeed, and all of this is covered in your textbook in chapters 8 and chapters 9. Now, let's return to our equation. First topic, count by weighing. And let me illustrate this for you. Let's say we have a bag of nails and it weighs 984 grams. And we need to know how many nails are in that bag, but we're not allowed to look inside the bag. But we are given one additional piece of information. All the nails are the same, and each nail weighs 12 grams. Knowing how much each nail weighs allows us to easily work the equation using dimensional analysis. How many nails? So we merely set up the dimensional analysis equation where everything cancels out but nails. And once we have the units we're looking for, we nearly multiply the equation out, and we have been able to count the nails by merely weighing the bag of nails. The key here, of course, is to note this ratio, the number of grams per nail. Why this relationship is important is it allows us to turn how much something weighs into a count. This is a conversion factor. Note that the periodic chart does the same thing for the atoms. For one atom of anything, the periodic chart tells us how much it weighs. We know one carbon atom, looking at the periodic chart, weighs about 12 AMU or 12 atomic mass units. This gets us to the next subject of needing to scale up. An AMU is an incredibly small amount of weight and we need a way to scale that up. Actually, we need to scale it up to the gram quantity. We do that using the concept of a mole. We know that one carbon atom, at least of carbon 12, weighs 12 AMU. We are going to scale up 1 AMU by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. In other words, if I take 1 AMU and scale it up 6.02 to 10 to the 23rd times, better known as Avogadro's number, I will come up with exactly 12 grams. But of course, I have no longer have one atom. I now also have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, according to my scale up. And 6.02 to 10 to 23rd atoms, or anything for that matter, is called a mole. Don't be terribly disturbed by the fact that we're giving a rather large number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd a name, one mole. You're actually more familiar with this than you might know. Although this might seem a little uncomfortable, 
calling 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, calling that number a mole. You're certainly comfortable with calling the number 12 by the word dozen. So don't overthink it. It's no more complicated than that. If I say have two moles of something, it means I have two times this quantity. Just like if I said I had two dozen items, I would have two times that quantity. Now that we know how to scale up and count by weighing, it's time to return to our original problem, which was this. Having 128 grams of O2, how many grams of hydrogen do I need? To work a stoichiometry problem like this, use the general strategy. Write whatever it is that you're looking for on the left. I'm looking for grams of H2. And write immediately on the opposite side of an equal sign the material that it gives you to start with. In this case, 128 grams of O2. The strategy for working these can best be thought of as mapping. I'm going to start out with 128 grams of O2. I'm going to convert that to moles of O2, which will then be converted to moles of H2. And finally, that will be converted to grams of H2. So it will take uh, from grams of O2, one, two, three conversion steps to get to the answer. And here we go, starting with 128 grams of O2, I know there are 32 grams of O2 for every one mole of O2. I get that from the periodic chart. The periodic chart tells me that one mole of oxygen weighs 16 grams, so one mole of O2 is going to weigh 32 grams. Note that at this point, I have now calculated moles of O2. Or put another way, I have worked my conversion from grams of O2 to moles of O2. Next, I'll convert from moles of O2 to moles of H2. This is accomplished by noting in the balanced chemical equation, one mole of O2 is balanced with two moles of H2. And finally, we need to complete the process by converting moles of H2 to grams of H2. We do this again, noting from the periodic chart that one mole of H2 weighs two grams. Note at this point, the unit that I needed to show up has indeed shown up. At this point, all I need to do is get my calculator out and multiply out the numbers. And when I do, I come up with 16 grams of H2. One more quick note. The ratio of moles of something to moles of something else, that is obtained from the balanced chemical equation. And you can see in this particular case, one mole of O2 is paired with two moles of H2. And that's a broad overview of how to work stoichiometry problems.